All right, moving on. To get the UAE-Israel deal done, Israel had to give up on the idea of annexations, at least for the time being. This flying in the face of many of the prime minister's now former allies. Political strategist and director of English operations from the Yamina party, Jeremy Salton, joins us with more. Jeremy, thanks so much for being on the line with us. Now, President Trump made it clear that Israel had promised not to carry out the annexation while Netanyahu made it clear that this was a temporary postponement. Which one do you believe? I relations on the diplomatic achievement, but it, it's pretty clear here that this is not a political victory for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I don't even think this will get him two votes. This has killed the sovereignty. I mean, it, it's just pretty clear. If you're suspending it when we know there's an election in November and uh, the, the resumption of the sovereignty talks would only be after the possible re-election of Donald Trump, by the time you would start talking about this, we don't know if Israel is going to be going to an election within the next year with the current crisis between Netanyahu and Gantz. It's just very clear that this is this is putting an end. By suspending it, it's, it's a nice political word to pretty much say that it's over. I see. All right. Well, you know, after the annexation plan that did not take place on July 1st, as you know, you know, it was postponed to an unknown date. The issue fell off the agenda in Israel. Why did the settlers and the right-wing parties who were in support of annexations, still think that it had a chance? Well, you know, I think at least I have been pretty consistent by saying that the minute that I saw that uh, Netanyahu chose Benny Gantz as his senior coalition partner and to become the next defense minister replacing Naftali Bennett of my party, that this was just not something that was in his top priority. I mean, when Netanyahu formed this government, he said that he was forming it to do two things. One was to combat coronavirus, and the second was to apply Israeli sovereignty. And, and we didn't believe him, and I believe for good reason, because if we're fast-forwarding a number of months, it looks more like what he did was combat sovereignty and apply coronavirus through this second wave. All right. Well, I mean, you know, again, annexation was a central theme of the election promises of Prime Minister Netanyahu, as you just said, and of the Likud party. So will Yamina and other former allies, because you mentioned that this was a political blow, ultimately, to Netanyahu, in your opinion. Will Yamina and other former allies work with Netanyahu and the Likud any time soon? I, I don't think that the right is uh, <laughs> in Netanyahu's pocket anymore. I think that, that that time has passed. It's it's long gone. The situation we're dealing with today is that Netanyahu decided that it was more important for him to make a diplomatic deal with a country that's not killed one Israeli that uh, is all the way on the other side of uh, uh, the Gulf, on the other side of the Middle East, as opposed to going ahead and asserting Israeli sovereignty in Judea and Samaria to the Israeli settlers who are living close to a million of them. And uh, this is a decision that we would have seen from a lot of left-wing prime ministers. So I think, yeah, for sure, the right is going to reassess. We're going to have a reassessment of the relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. And we'll have to question if he can even be the prime minister candidate of the right-wing camp in the next election, whenever that is. All right, well, you know, do you think that this might have, that this normalization agreement might actually sway people away from annexations? You know, you know what are the benefits of making this diplomatic deal? Might, pe might people who were pro-annexation maybe see the positives of this deal and maybe back away from annexations? Or is that just not a chance? I, I think really most Israelis have seen what uh, deals on pieces of paper have brought us, as opposed to uh, what the reality on the ground has shown us. Uh, you know, you live in the Middle East a long time, you understand that there's nothing more permanent than temporary, and you understand that when you have an opportunity, it's time to seize it. Netanyahu had a once-in-a-century opportunity to go ahead and apply sovereignty in Judea and Samaria. Um, similar to what we saw with Levi Eshkol, with Eastern Jerusalem, mm -hmm. with Menachem Begin, with the Golan Heights. And it looks like the Netanyahu chapter of history will be closed with a peace deal, perhaps, but not with applying even one centimeter, not one inch of Israeli All right. land. All right, Jeremy Salton, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.